Hello, this is Renee from Martha and Me, and today I'd like to show you how to crochet this cute little cup cozy. It's worked in the round, and it's all single crochet, so it makes it very, very simple for beginners to learn. And the supplies we'll need today are yarn, and I'm gonna be using this Karen Simply Soft Stripes, and the colorway is called Times Square. I have a little ball I've made up of 30 yards, which is what I'm gonna to need to make this project. You need a crochet hook, of course, and you get a crochet hook in the size that fits your project, fits your yarn. You'll need scissors, you'll need stitch markers, and to finish off, you'll need a tapestry needle with a very large eye large enough to accommodate that yarn. So to start, we're going to need to make a slip knot, and I'll show you how to do that. We'll just go through it once or twice, and then if you need more help, you can always back this up and watch it again and again, or I'll leave a link to a video, a dedicated video on the slip knot method, so you can go over that as well. So. What I do for the slip knot is I wrap the yarn twice around my finger. So I have two loops on my finger and I'll take the back loop and I'll just pull that over the front loop. I still have two loops, but they're in a different position now. Now I'll take the back loop again, pull it over that front loop, but keep on going, pull it over the tip of my finger. And I've got a slip knot. If I would put my hook in there, and pull on it, it tightens it right up, just like you need. Second thing we should learn is how to hold the crochet hook. This is always very awkward for beginners, and there are two methods that are equally efficient, equally acceptable, and I use the knife method, and I put my palm over the handle and use my pointer finger to help a little with pushing down and around and all that sort of stuff and holding it firm. And it's called the knife method because this is exactly how you hold a knife when you cut your meat for dinner and make it very simple to remember. The other method is the pencil method. Again, easy to remember. How do you hold a pencil? This is it. You put the hook over the top of your hand. You grasp it with your pointer finger and your thumb and use it that way. I have never had good luck with this. It doesn't feel comfortable for me. So I use a knife method, but there's nothing wrong with using, um, I'm, yes, I use a knife method. There's nothing wrong with using the pencil method. All right, now how do we hold, we'll go back and put that loop we made our slip knot on the hook, because we know how to hold it now. How do we hold the yarn? Well, I take my the hook end and I have the yarn end, that's called the working end, and I put my palm up over the top of that. And I scoop in here and have the yarn coming up between my little finger and my ring finger. And that's with your palm up. Then I turn my palm over, I'm still holding on to that end, it's still between my little finger and ring finger and put my palm down. And now I take my pointer finger and I slip underneath so that the yarn is now on top of that pointer finger. It's on top of the little finger and it's on top of the pointer finger. And then you turn it perpendicular to your tabletop or your lap, whatever you're working on, and you are ready to go. You have your top finger to kind of provide tension, to tighten up or loosen up. And then the yarn running through your little finger and your ring finger gives a little drag to just provide a little bit of tension that we're gonna need. So back this up if you need help on either one of those things or go to the link to those dedicated videos. Now, this is how we're gonna start our Get in, get in closer here. This is how we're gonna start this cup cozy. 
we need a foundation chain. It is a circle, but we've got to make the circle first. And to do that, we'll need a chain of 25 chain stitches. I've measured on the cup that I'm using, and with my tension, the type of yarn I'm using, I need 25 chain stitches. And we will use that 25 throughout this demo, but when you make this, you might do 25 chain stitches, hold it up to your cup, and find out it's not quite long enough or it's too long depending on your cup so you want it snug but you don't you want to obviously to be able to get on the cup and you don't want it to fall off in this case it's going to be 25. so how do i make a chain stitch yeah pinch on to the bottom of a loop that's on our crochet hook and you want it to be nice and loose you want the head of the crochet hook to be able to go in and out and you take the push down pull back, raise up. And what that's done is now you have yarn over the hook. That is called yarn over. And you just pull straight back, go through that loop, and that's your very first chain. Again, we go down, push back, up, pull through the second chain stitch. Down, back, up, pull through, when I pull through, I make sure that I'm pulling up or whatever it takes to make sure I have enough room because you always want to leave room for that head and the yarn to go through. So I have three chains and let's just keep going. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 20, oops, 25. Now we have 25 chains. Make sure you, all your chain is flat, all your V's are showing so that you don't have a kink. And you don't have it flipped over or anything. So you've got your chain and we're gonna pick up that chain and we're going to take the hook and go into the very first chain stitch we made. This is joining the circle. We're forming the circle now. Whoops, I dropped that, no problem. I'm able to pick that up. Okay, now I just yarn over, pull through the first chain stitch that I just entered, and I pull through the one that was on my hook. And now I have a join, and it's all going this right direction because I made sure my uh, chain stitch was flat. All right, now from here, we're going to single crochet into each one of these chains. And I'll warn you right off the bat that this is for beginners. This is a little difficult because at first you're not holding the yarn properly with this consistent tension. And this chain stitch often has different size uh, stitches but you watch if you just patiently go through this you'll have a beautiful product so to learn how to do the single crochet get in a little closer here for you we go into our very first chain and do it yarn over pull through and now i have two loops on my hook and I yarn over again and pull through those two. And I've made my very first single crochet. Now at this point in each circle, every time we go around, we are going to put 
a stitch marker in that top of that very first stitch. So I've got a stitch marker here, and do you see the V formed by that very first stitch? Two legs of a V. I'm going to slip the stitch marker under both. So to mark my very first stitch. And then I just proceed right around the, the circle. I enter the stitch with my hook. I do yarn over, pull through till I see two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through both of those. Go on to the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, I've got two hooks, two, I'm sorry, two loops, yarn over, pull through. This is why I say it's a little bit difficult for beginners because it feels like this is kind of loosey-goosey all over the place, but just, just pick your way very carefully through, make sure you know where the next stitch is. This big loop here, you might think that's what we're gonna go through, but you can't go through that because that's the one you just used. So you go through the very first unused stitch. And this is what you've gotta take your time until you really know what these stitches look like and make sure you're going into the next unused stitch and just keep doing those single crochets. You'll be an expert on single crochets when you're done with this. Okay, to reiterate, you go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. I've got two loops, yarn over, pull through both. That's a single crochet. Let's just keep going right around this circle and it gets easier. If you look, we're getting a, two rows now and this is a little bit better for me to hold on to. It's not this floppy little chain and um, I really appreciate that. Oh, I was just straightening this out. Okay, go to the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Keep doing this all the way around. You should wind up with 25 single crochet stitches. Generally, we count each row when we're done, but for this project, we really don't need to do that. It's very fluid, very forgiving project. into each chain stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. The next one, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. Over, pull through, pull through two. Oops, I'll be very careful that I don't split my yarn. It makes it a little messy. Whoops. It's harder to handle that little tiny chain stitch for everyone. So don't get discouraged if you're having issues with that chain stitch. There's nothing to grab hold of and it just makes it a little hard. But just gingerly pick through here, make sure you're getting into the right stitch and Okay, I, I keep going back here because I want to make sure I'm not flipping my stitches over. I don't want to have a kink in my circle. When you get close to the end, you can really check. And I keep moving it just to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Go into the stitch, pull through two. Go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And it looks like this is my last stitch. 
So I'll go in here, pull through, pull through two. Now I've come to the stitch that I put the stitch marker in. And that, if you remember, was my very first stitch in that row. And so I will go into that stitch, I'll remove it so it won't be in the way, but I'll go right in there and that will be my very first stitch of the second row. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now, as I said, that's the very first stitch of the second row. So again, I will take my stitch marker. I will look at the very top stitch and there it is with this V. I don't want my hook to get in the way of your view. So I will put the stitch marker right here and I want both legs of that V. And we've got it right there. Now we have two rows. Here we are with our project so far. We have a foundation chain of was chain stitches, 25, and then we went along and into each one of those 25 chain stitches, we did a single crochet, which was our first full row of single crochet. And then we put a stitch marker to mark the very first row of the second, a very first stitch of the second row. And we'll keep doing that each time we get around to this stitch so that we keep track of the very first stitch in every single row. And we're going to continue with our single crochet. So remember, we go in to the stitch and we go into that makes it very easy because we go into the top of a single crochet and that's we can recognize that by the V and we go into under both legs of the V and we do yarn over and we pull through yarn over and pull through both of those loops we we'll go to the next and see how easy it is to go into here so simple to find these stitches Go under both legs of the single crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. We have the two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both of those. Go into the stitch, yarn over, pull it through, Yarn over and pull it through both of those loops. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both of them. And we'll just proceed all the way around our circle. And it can go fairly fast. You have something to hold on to. You have this nice body of this cup cozy that we're crocheting. And just keep doing our single crochets. Once you get done with this cup cozy, you're gonna be an expert on single crochet. And it works up pretty quickly. We'll go all the way around. And I'll just show you how to move our stitch marker and what I mean by that. Oops, okay. I almost, I want to show you what I almost did. I almost grabbed hold of of the loop underneath and that would have made a big mess, but luckily I didn't. These things happen to the even experienced crocheters and you just need to be aware of it. We can fix anything. So nothing is unfixable. Crochet is very flexible. Oops. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both of those. Into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, 
pull through two. You're almost there. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both of them. Now it looks like I have one more stitch into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through both. Now we're back to the, this was a marker and it, all this marker's doing is showing me where the first stitch in that row was, in row two. So I can go, in this case, I can actually go through even with the stitch marker. If you can't, at this point, you could easily take that off because you know the very next stitch is the first stitch. So just go in there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both of them. And now this is the very first stitch of the third row. So I can take this stitch marker off it just operates just like a safety pin. Take that off of there. And now I'll get in and under my loop. And the very first actual stitch, I put the stitch marker in there. And you see how that it's a V. We always look for the Vs. And let me clip that so it won't come off. And now we're just going to repeat that. Oops, sorry to be out of the view. We're going to repeat that for uh, at least 10 more rows until it's as high as we think it should be. I finished my 13 rows, or approximately 13 rows, whatever you decide you're going to need for this cup cozy. And I want to finish this off, but I want to finish it off without an obvious end here, without an obvious knot. So this is what we're going to do. Let me get in a little closer. These are all single crochets and they all have a V at the top. Nice V. So it would be nice if this ending was in a V. So let's pull out our stitch on the hook, pull it out. It's a loop on the hook, not a stitch, until it's just laying here like this so that we don't accidentally pull that stitch out. But we're going to take our hook and we're going to go in to the very next stitch. And if you have to be careful, you just be careful, but you go in through the, st through the stitch and then flip this whole thing over. Whoop. and now we have our large loop and I still have my hook through through that stitch and I'm going to want to take this loop and pull it back with my crochet hook when I pull it back and let me get this straightened out okay I've got my hook maybe if I tighten it up a tiny bit It'll be easier. There we go. I'm going to pull that through. And now when I flip this back over and tighten everything up, we have made another V and it looks neat and tidy on the top. So I want to pull this up again. take my scissors and cut the yarn and go ahead and pull that completely through. Just pull it completely through. And there's nothing to secure it now. It is just out here in the world and that would come unraveled and nothing flat. So we're going to take our tapestry needle and thread it. And I find it much easier rather than trying to figure out if I can get this through this eye of this needle, although it is big, I just make it easy on myself and I pull it tight and pinch the end and then it is very easy to thread. Okay, we're going to turn this inside out now so that we can work on the inside and have nothing showing if we accidentally 
uh, don't make it as tidy as we could. Whatever we do for this end, we're going to do for the starting end, although I won't have it in this video. Just know that you're going to duplicate that. Whoops. When I turned it inside out, I left my thread in there, inside there. Okay, now I'm back where I should be. So this is inside out now, and we have our lovely V's on the top, all matching V's. Nobody can tell where we start or stopped. But what we're going to do is go in and out of the stitches on the back here. And I go three ways. I go a little bit one way, a little bit another way, and a little bit another way. And that then it will never pull out. We're going to be washing this. We're going to be handling it every time we use it. And this could easily come out if we don't secure it in some way. And a knot is not the answer. That would look horrible. So I just carefully go in and out of stitches. Maybe an inch one way an inch the next. You want this needle is a blunt. It's got a tip, but it's fairly blunt. And so it's less apt to split your yarn, but you just want to be careful as you're going in and out that you get under an actual stitch and not through the, th the yarn. And if you're very good, you can just slip through several at once. And you want to pull it, but a cup cozy has got to be stretchy. So you don't want to pull it too, too tight. Okay, let's go back the other direction. And so I will, I don't want to go in the same stitch I was in. I can go over that one and I can then, if I want to go through the same stitches, it doesn't matter. So long as we're going in the other direction. And just carefully make sure you're just catching underneath those stitches and not through the yarn. The very act of pulling, going through three different directions keeps this from, from unraveling. So let's go the third direction now. And none of this is showing on the front side. Okay, I think we've done it enough. Back and forth, back and forth should hold. So we're gonna cut this off and when we do, Pull it tight so that when we cut it off at the surface and give it a little tug, that end will go inside. And you want to repeat that on the bottom with your starting yarn. And you're going to have this very nice cup cozy that you can use. You can knock these out in nothing flat and you'll be the envy of all your family and friends.